and we are beyond excited to share a remix with you today. COVID. And you guys bought licenses to some random thing called Remix and kept us going. Uh, we're going to show you another random thing called Remix. If you look at the world's most valuable frameworks, you won't be surprised to see the popularity of React, Angular and Vue. But one thing does stand out. Remix. Most developers don't realize that Remix was created by the same people behind React Router, a library that has been downloaded billions of times and is one of the most widely used routing solutions in the history of JavaScript. And yet, if you ask the average developer what Remix actually does, you would meet with a confused look. The truth is, Remix does everything. Routing, data loading, mutation, SSR, cache control, performance optimization, built-in errors, callbacks, and not only that, Remix is a full-stack framework. This is the story of Remix, a framework born from the minds that already shaped the React ecosystem with React Router. It's a story about two indie developers who refuse to accept the broken state of the web development. It's about challenging giants like Next.js. It's about questioning the conventions of modern React. But more than that, it's about asking the fundamental question. What would web development look like if we started from scratch and built it right? Ryan Florence and Michael Jackson were both independent developers who cared about making the web better. Years earlier, Ryan had noticed a problem with React. React was powerful, but there was a problem. It did not handle navigation between pages very well. So Ryan built React Router. He did not spend months on it. He built a clean and useful solution in a few hours. Michael Jackson, who had worked as an engineer at Twitter, saw what Ryan had made and joined him. By 2022, React Router had been downloaded more than a billion times. 7 out of 10 React developers used it. In 2015, they started React training. They travel the world, teaching teams at places like Netflix, Apple, Google, and Airbnb. At those workshops, they listened closely. They heard the same complaints over and over. Apps were slow, setups were complicated, and developers were fighting the framework instead of working with it. What does it mean to be declarative? Uh, some of you are here, and maybe, maybe you already get it. Like, you've, you've got it. Everyone who rose their hands uh, to our workshops, I hope, I hope you got it. Uh, and you've, you've seen this before at our workshops, if you've been. Uh, here's my little app. It's got a play and a stop and a change tone method, component did mount, I make an oscillator, and then when I enter and leave and move, um, I play and I stop and I change tone. What I don't like about this code is when I look at render, I have no idea what's going on. I have to experience time, right? We, 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 really, we really like React because we don't have to think too much about time. We just think, okay, here's, here's a blob of state, comes from my component, comes from Redux, it comes from anywhere, and then I'm going to render it. And then when something changes, the state changes, and then I just render again. We, we quit thinking about time. A pattern emerged. Modern web apps were getting heavier and more complex. Developers were loading a huge bundle of JavaScript into the browser. This created two big problems. First, data loading was messy. Requests often waited on other requests, forming slow chains like a waterfall. To fix that, team added extra libraries which, you guessed it, added even more complexity. Second, performance suffered. Big JavaScript bundles made page slow to load, especially for people with weak internet connections. Search engines sometimes saw blank page until JavaScript finished running. Even worse, developers were forgetting the web's basic strengths like HTML forms, browser caching, and progressive enhancement. Then came March 2020, when in-person workshops became impossible, React training collapse, Ryan and Michael were forced to lay off staff and rethink the entire business. But they did not give up. Ryan started experimenting with a different way to build web apps, a full-stack approach that used the web strength. Michael joined him, and by October 2020, they released Remix. Remix launched in an unusual way. It wasn't fully free at first. Indie license was $250, and enterprise license was $1,000. The team offered paid supported license so they could keep developing it. Some people did not like the idea, other people spared and formed a tight community. 
They talk on Discord, tried ideas, and shaped the tool. These early users wanted faster pages and returned to a web standards. Remix focused on a few simple ideas. First, make data loading in parallel and not slow as waterfall. Second, render pages on the server so users can see content immediately and search engine can index it. Third, use the web's built in feature. For example, HTML forms that work without JavaScript, HTTP caching, and progressive enhancement. Remix wasn't inventing new magic. It was asking, what if we build on the web instead of fighting it? In October 2021, Remix raised 3 million in seed funding. Big names who support open source step in. Soon after, Remix went open source under the MIT license and released version 1.0 in November 2021. Ryan called it disgustingly fast and the project was production ready. The team grew. Kenzie Dodds, a well known React teacher, joined to help educate developers. The community exploded. Thousands of contributors, many projects using Remix, and conferences to celebrate it. Now, Shopify has always had some pretty excellent tooling for the no-code and low-code solutions. Um, but unfortunately, the custom code area side of things, it wasn't quick and it wasn't easy, but at least it was fast. So about a year and a half ago, Shopify realized that they needed to fix this problem. And they started working on a new framework, React framework, called Hydrogen. And again, the goal was to make things quick, easy, and fast to make a completely headless custom code Shopify website. Now, last time I checked, though, this isn't hydrogen conf. This is remix conf. So I get to introduce to you the idea or the framework and package that we're going to be working on to extract some of those things that we've built into our hydrogen framework, pull them out into a new package, and make them available for other great, quick, easy, and fast frameworks like Remix, for example. Then Shopify acquired Remix in October 2022. But this wasn't a shutdown deal. Shopify used parts of the Remix world already and wanted to help it grow. The acquisition meant more resources while keeping Remix open source and true to its ideas. Remix influence spread. React Router borrowed ideas from Remix. In 2022, it added features like loaders and actions inspired by Remix. By 2024, the two projects moved even closer. Remix and React Router merged in a way. Remix framework ideas became part of React Router version 7. Suddenly, many React developers could get Remix benefits without leaving React. Um, and it's been a while now that, that Ryan and I have both kind of felt a little bit like, no, oh, we're not sure where React is going. And then Remix took another big turn. In May 2025, the team announced Remix 3. This release was radical break. Instead of building with React, Remix 3 moved to a tiny alternative called P-React or Preact, specially a customized fork with minimal JSX layer. It changed how states and events work, removed many build tools dependencies, and focus on using browser API directly. The goal was simple remove layers of complexity and work more closely with the web platform. Remix 3 followed six strong design ideas. Number one, make code model first and AI friendly. Number two, use native web APIs. Number three, keep runtimes pure. Number four, avoid heavy dependency. Number five, favor small composable parts. And number six, ship one cohesive package. The trade-off was big. Remix 3 was not backward compatible. Upgrading from earlier Remix version often meant a rewrite. Some people felt betrayed, other side is a bold and necessary. 